Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. And today we have with us Walter Vendel, who's the founder of Fit20 Group. And today we're going to be talking about personal health franchise opportunities. Walter, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Mike. Hey, so I'm really excited to talk about this because I really feel like people um, these days want to get into some starting a business and maybe something they can start without um, stopping their current um, career path. And then when you think about fitness, that's very broad. So I, I'm excited to hear how your franchise opportunity is focused on personal health and what that entails. But before we get into that, give us a little background on yourself and then what led you to start Fit20 Group. Right. Okay. Well, I'm a trained as a psychologist um, and I worked in the IT industry for many years. And I have a lifelong uh, affinity with, uh, with training, with health, uh, healthy lifestyle. And I came across this concept of how you can get fit in 20 minutes a week. So that sounds too good to be true. Um, now, let me just clarify, 20 minutes a week? 20 minutes a week, Mike, you hear that right. Now, that's <laughs> so, curious. <laughs> I had the same kind of reaction that you just had. Like, what Yeah, 20 minutes a day sounds like a, a, mass, <laughs> a, right. a really wonderful achievement. <laughs> that's right. But maybe I should qualify it. So what it means is that you train for 20 minutes a week under personal supervision, doing specific slow motion exercises to strengthen your entire body and increase the levels of health and fitness. Next to that, you, sh you do well to move on a daily basis, but that could be walking or cycling or gardening, walking your dog, anything basically low intensity that just keeps the body moving. But you don't need to do more than that. So you only need to have one specific high intensity training okay. under personal supervision to really fundamentally increase your level of health. Well, that still is unique because I feel like so many people think of, you know, two hour, sweaty, intense, you know, going to the gym and you're just coming back, you know, um, you know, exhausted and you're doing that three, four or five times a week. Well, now one 20 minute session a week. And then of course, don't sit in, in the couch and do nothing for the rest of the week. Be active. That's the same thing as saying, you know, follow a you know, a uh, moderate, you know, lifestyle of nutrition. So that, that makes total sense. So I'm excited to hone in on what that 20 minutes looks like. But um, when you heard about this concept, then you became curious to say more people need to know about it, right? That's right. Because the truth is that about 80% of humanity <laughs> essentially doesn't go more than once a week, if that, to any kind of fitness. So um, for most people, they, they can't find it to actually go more than once a week to do anything. And my question was, can you do if you go once a week, which is for the average person, all that they can actually sustain over a longer period of time. Um, if you can make that in such a way that you get guaranteed results, then you've got something that is really super relevant for a large group of people. And that was what got me started. Yeah, that's really interesting. So then is this um, your, you, did you come up with this franchise concept from from the ground floor up and create it on your own? No, I improved it. So um, okay. essentially uh, slow motion training to muscular failure is something that already existed in the USA. Uh, it came originally from bodybuilder community way back in the late 70s, early 80s. Then it got validated with a study amongst women with osteoporosis. And for training them, the, the question was, will strength training improve the bone density of those women? And because they were afraid to actually cause injury or even break bones, they developed a slow motion protocol as training. So then they discovered that slow motion training actually stimulates all muscle types, fibers in an incredible, powerful way. 
and that it works not only for women with osteoporosis, but essentially works for any person. And um, so that's what I found. And then since we uh, taken it really to the next level with digitalizing and adding sensor technology, so we, we made it into a unique customer experience now. Yeah, I think that uh, that really in, in business, we need to make sure that our uh, competitive advantage is really clear and concise. So for instance, you cannot just say, oh, well, we um, help you get fit. Well, there's a whole lot more to it than that. And I yeah. believe that being able to say this is not just some a uh, harebrained idea. This is based on decades of research. Um, and in fact, um, the, when you mentioned that one name popped in, into my mind and maybe I'm off base, but Nautilus Casey Viator, was that yeah. anything part of that study? Yeah, we, we work with wow. Nautilus machines, uh, the, the one series. So yes. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember um, way back in the day, I mean, I've always been involved in fitness and working out. And my son and I, you know, we we do, you know, during quarantine here, we do workouts in our home five days a week. But I remember that study um, because it was so unique. And it was, you know, like you said, the slow motion and, and it was really different. And if you are, you know, using poor form, you can get injured. If you are doing high reps, it does something different. So I like the the research base that you uh, you were um, really founding everything on. Um, talk a little bit more about the competitive advantage of uh, maybe virtual. And I'm I'm certain that your um, locations don't require only virtual, but if that's an option, I think that makes it more um, accessible to people. Mm. Yes, you, we also had uh, COVID in, the, in Europe, so we developed uh, also virtual training sessions, but uh, we see that really as second best. Um, you really do need actually to, particularly our target group of clients are 40 plus years old, and you need to stimulate and challenge the muscle groups of the six major muscle groups of the body of the upper core and lower body if you want to do that in a safe and controlled manner you actually do need the machines so the nautilus machines because of their original cam technology that's a good start and we've been developing with core together uh, who's the manufacturer of the nautilus machines uh, a unique sense of technology that nobody else has. And we record that. So we also have the training data of all our members, which we can track. And we did a separate scientific study on over the course of seven years with 16,000 clients. And nobody's ever done that in the whole world. So this is how we can tell what you need to do to realize optimum level of fitness with once a week training. And you do actually need to come to a physical location to get those results. You can't do that online in an uncontrolled home situation sure. with the same kind of results. You get some result, but you also have a heightened chance for injury or simply no result. Yeah, that's a really good point. And, and it kind of gets down to, um, number one, to get the results, you need to be there. And number two, to get the um, accountability, you need to be there. So yes, being there in person will give you the safer results and the actual results desired because of the um, exercise form and everything. But then the accountability is a big piece because if all you did was sell online access to some exercise routine, it is so easy for people not to push play because if it's easy to do, it's easy not to do. That's right. That's right. Yes. And uh, what you find is that for many people, it's very hard to week after week, month after month to intrinsically motivate yourself for your workout. But if you have an appointment with uh, your trainer and you know, that person actually is waiting for me, is waiting for Mike to turn up. You, you really feel a kind of obligation, you know, to go. Even if you don't really particularly want to go that day, it doesn't matter. So we are your extended will, if you like, to actually yeah. do yeah. it. And it is really as simple as that. You need to just do it. 
And one of the things we try to get into our members is, you know, you need to really make this a health routine in your life, just like brushing your teeth. Do you question yourself every evening whether you should brush your teeth or not? No, you just do it. So for 20 is the same. You just need to do it once a week for the rest of your life. Exactly. I, um, I, so now let's transition into now that we've got some uniqueness taken care of, um, let's talk about the franchise opportunity. What sets your franchise opportunity apart from a traditional, uh, maybe personal training opportunity or a, a actual gym? Yeah. Well, one of the great things of franchise is that, um, you really benefit as a franchise owner of, of jumping on a, on, a, on a train that's already moving. So you're off to a very quick start. And um, Fit20 is, of course, operating in the health uh, arena. And the pers- it's, a, it's a people business. So if you really have a passion for wanting to make a difference in the quality of life of other people, and earning your money, have a very good earning model opportunity with that, then, then you really are setting yourself for, for a future which is very rewarding, both financially and also in terms of humanly. You know, that really feels good. So it can start as a very small business and only requires about 100K investment to get the whole studio set up and all, cover all costs, everything included, up until your break even. And it's easily scalable. So you can scale up to 300 members in your studio. And if your ambition goes beyond that, you start your second studio and so on. So it's simple to start as a one-man show. And then you build it as you go along, hire some part-timers. And you keep building it. You can scale it. And it's sustainable because we're not a sort of fashion or hype. So we're here to stay. I mean, I started this in the Netherlands in 2009 as a franchise. And we've been running now for 11 years. And we still keep growing. So people are entering something which is there to stay. Yeah, and I love the the mindset of a franchise where it is more than just a concept. It is the success pattern to follow because it's been said that success leads clues. Well, if you know that when you start the studio and you launch it doing this and then you grow it doing that, then there's a pattern for success. Um, talk a little bit about what um, someone would experience when they begin a brand new franchise in their area. What will they um, see results wise or what are some of the things they'll be doing in the community? Okay. Um, well, well, first of all, the, the, the great thing is that starting up a new business, uh, you know, everything from the logo, material, website, you name it, it all takes time and effort. And all of that with franchises taken care of. So you get straight onto the onboarding to, to get ready. And once you open up, there is a growth dashboard you know, that tells you on and offline in terms of the marketing efforts, what you need to do, how, when, and it's all taken care of. So you can fully focus on executing the strategy that you've planned together with the franchisor, how to grow to your first 100 members. And once you hit that target, you you set up your next plan to hit 200 members. So all of that requires, of course, that you gradually develop yourself as a local entrepreneur or the local hero. So the great thing is you can do all kinds of things. And the only limitation is your own creativity. So we offer a a lot of best practices. And then you're going to have to look at your particular area, what works best. I mean, is there a golf club where you could team up with? Is a very good hairdresser or a very good uh, clothing shop. And there's many kind of things where you can work together with, or a physiotherapist or nutritionist. So there's many ways to uh, do all kind of joint promotions, apart from, of course, the online uh, things you can do on all the social media and on our local website, and so on and on and on. So all of that has been prepared. So you are boom, ready to go. You know, that to me is very comforting because if I need to try to figure out what should work and what shouldn't work, that is a scary proposition. So being able to follow a process is really powerful and important. And I think you had mentioned the demographic of typically your um, your uh, clients or customers that are coming into the studios are a certain age. Talk a little bit about that because 
I feel like that would help clarify in someone's mind that, well, this is not some big uh, gym with sweaty bodybuilders, loud music and loud weight clanging. This is typically going to look like this. (laughs) That's right. I mean, if anything, we're a kind of oasis in the desert, you know, you, we don't have music in the studios. We don't have mirrors. We just totally focus on our clients without any distraction. So our clients is typically 40 plus years old. And that's one separation already from the regular gyms is where they still aim at the young folk. We really focus on the 40 plus and the the emerging silver economy. So there's an incredible change in the demography. If you look at past, the population looked like a pine tree, you know, broad at the base and narrow at the top. But now it looks more like an apple tree, you know, it's all round. So the average age is rising and rising. So if you take the Netherlands as an example, we've got 17 and a half million people, but 8 million of those are 40 plus years old. That's half. And it keeps changing. So I think looking at the aging demographics is a very wise thing to do for starting a business. Now, we also see that due to COVID, uh, the health conscience in people is increasing because everybody realizes after 40, 50 or 60, you don't stay young and healthy forever. So you have to look after your body. So I always say the first 40 years of your life, your body looks after you. And the second 40 years, you should look after your body. And that's exactly when Fit 20 slides in. And those people, 40 plus year old, are very often in the midst of their careers. They are raising a family. So time is scarcer for them, often than money. And they want to stay fit, but they don't know how. And they don't have the hours to spend. And this is where we are the perfect solution. Yeah, I really agree with that. And I like the, um, you know, trying to be all things to all people never works. So trying to show people how to get fit at any age and any goal, you're you're not standing out to anybody. So I really like how you zero in on that. Um, Talk a little bit about how your vision, mission, and core values um, really plays through to help build that um, foundation so that your franchisees will have really a culture of success to, to work in. That's right. Yes. So one of the things we came to is uh, also working with the EOS system is to develop a strong idea of vision, mission, and core values. So our vision is strength changes everything. And it's literally that simple. So if we are in our prime years of our life, we're also at maximum strength, right? It's uh, look at some 40, uh, look to some 70 year old plus people. You can see the loss of strength, and they are walking with a stick, and you can see in all kinds of things that they actually are losing their functional capacity. But you don't have to. So it's actually very easy to change it. But this comes from our mission, dri- vision driven and mission driven, and our mission is we add strength to your life. So if you are getting older, but we add strength to your life, then essentially you can function as a 70-year-old as you could when you were 60 and so on. So you prolong your quality of life. And our core value is also very particular. um, And we look in that way for the right fit. Because we are so much a people business, we find that both for master franchisees and franchise owners, we always ask ourselves the question, do they get us? And culture comes before skills or strategy. So if they embrace our vision, mission, and core values, then we really see in franchise a fantastic synergy and we make a difference in the world. Yeah, I just love your your message and your mission and, and what you guys are doing to make it easy to obtain a unique franchise and help change people's lives with something that makes them kind of sit up and, and take notice. And I think that so many people would say, I'm not in the shape I am. I know I need to do something about it, but one hour a day, six days a week is way too much. But I could do 20 minutes a week and then monitor and be wise throughout the rest of the week. So I think it just is such a great um, 
business value proposition. Um, give us a, an idea of how someone that may be interested in this um, opportunity to maybe start a franchise and launch out on their own, what's the best way they can reach out and learn more? Okay. Well, for the world, we've got fit20.com and they can orientate which country they're in. We're operating in nine countries currently, and we will add about three countries per year. So people who look have to see whether we're already active in that particular country. And if not, they could you know, indicate that they've got interest to orientate more into the business proposition of Fit20 in that country. Um, for us, Europe and USA are most important markets right now. In the coming years, China will become, of course, hugely important for us. And then we cover the major uh, geographical territories of the world. Excellent. Well, Walter, thank you so much for coming on today. It was really a pleasure talking with you. Likewise, Mike. Enjoy it. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.